Hey guys, uh, just a quick heads up before this video gets started in earnest. Uh, first of all, I want to let you guys know that the video uh, is not going to have any uh, real spoilers at all whatsoever. I think the closest thing uh, you could call a spoiler uh, in the video which follows is that I uh, come right out and say what I think the, the main theme is. Uh, if you consider if you consider that a spoiler, then I understand if you want to stay away from this video. But that's 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 pretty much it. Um, also, uh, originally this video was going to involve uh, a lot more uh, actual video content. Um, my idea originally was to take trailer footage that had been released to the public and then incorporate that with some gameplay from other YouTubers because I did not want to support this game. Uh, also, I haven't had a capture card in forever, so uh, it would have been really, really hard uh, for me to get my hands on the game and, and then like uh, do my own gameplay, which is what I would like to do in the future if I do more of these video essays. But uh, alas, uh, no capture card, uh, no access to gameplay footage. Um, you know, I, I could have grabbed, originally I was thinking about grabbing video from other YouTubers, but then I, you know, it's kind of shitty. Like, even if you do credit them, you know, uh, it's kind of shitty to just grab people's footage. I know everybody does it. I just, you know, I don't think that's the kind of thing that I want to do. Um, my plan going forward as I do more videos like this is to... Uh, record my own gameplay as a matter of course. Um, in the case of The Last of Us 2, I, just, I did not want to support this game. I did not want to buy this. Uh, I did not want to buy this game, uh, give them my money and, and support like Naughty Dog's uh, practices or the insipid storytelling which follows. So um, I elected uh, not to do that. So uh, there is going to be just a couple, uh, a series of trailers, that which is made publicly available, just looped. Uh, continuously throughout the video. So if you're like, geez, wow, what the fuck? I've seen this same shot like six times already. Wait, what's up with that? It's just, it's just there because it's the best, <laughs> it's the best I could do. Okay, just bear with me. Anyway, uh, that's the end of this unscripted preface. Uh, now we're going to get into the video itself. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, I'm done. The Last of Us Part Two isn't a game I was all too jazzed about playing even before the controversy started. I recognize this is something akin to a heretical statement, but I never really was all too wowed by the first game. Which is saying something, honestly, because grizzled, hard-ass, tragic killer turned steadfast father figure is one of my all-time favorite tropes. Normally, it's an instant win for me. While The Last of Us wasn't bad by any means, Something about the narrative didn't click for me. Maybe it's because I'm a bit bored with post-apocalyptic settings these days. Maybe it's because by the time I got around to playing it, every element of its story had been discussed at length by every YouTuber and 90% of their extended family, including their dog. But hey, that multiplayer was fucking rad. So, not a fan, not a hater, but I was never really chomping at the bit for part two like some of my friends were. But holy shit. I can understand what a horrible time this must be to be a fan of this franchise right now. Jesus, fucking, are you guys okay? I, I'm so fucking sorry, fuck. So unless you've been living under a rock for the last few months, there was a giant fucking kerfuffle leading up to the release of The Last of Us Part Two. Key elements of the game's story were leaked, as were several images and cutscenes. The source of those leaks was never 100% confirmed, as far as I'm aware. There was talk of it perhaps being the work of one of the more disgruntled former employees, or perhaps it was some rogue hackers out for a little digital havoc. Personally, I'd like to imagine it was a wild pack of karma demons out to punish Naughty Dog Vice President Neil Druckmann for his terrible sense of personal grooming and for sucking at the teat of Anita Sarkeesian. Hopefully that's figurative, not literal, but hey, everyone's got their kinks, Neil, and whatever two consenting adults want to get up to behind closed doors is A-OK -okay by me. Anyway, whoever the culprit ultimately was, the goddamn cat was let out of the bag. 
Naughty Dog, Sony, and a third-party company named Muso went scorched earth on this motherfucker in response. And I don't just mean they tried to take down any instances they could find of the game's actual material that had been loosed upon the web ahead of release. I don't think anybody sensible had a real problem with that. No, they started targeting creators who were simply discussing the leaks themselves, shooting for video and channel takedowns, even in instances where no content from the game was featured at all. You could just be dipshit McYouTuber sitting in front of a badly lit green screen, yapping into a blue Yeti, and the feral Naughty Dog would be coming for that ass. Scummy tactics, to be sure, but I can almost understand if not condone. Because Sony and Naughty Dog surely wanted to make some money of their little darling, and that was going to prove difficult if these leaks were perpetuated because... <laughs> Holy shit, this stuff was bad. The leaks in question seem to suggest the vicious, violent deaths of numerous beloved characters, handled in ways that many felt were disingenuous, serving as a play at shock value and little else. If that weren't bad enough, they also seem to hint at the game's primary theme being the futility of revenge, which, uh, Jesus Christ, man, that's it. That's all you've got. This is that award-winning writing everyone keeps going on about. Man, what the fuck? As backlash spread across the gaming community, those behind the game tried their best at damage control, not confirming the leaks, but not denying them either. More and more as time went on, legitimate criticisms and concerns were brushed aside, with gamers being called entitled. That word always seems to come up, doesn't it? Many of the game's defenders attempted to use the weakest and most distasteful of the criticisms as grounds to ignore all of them as a whole. While there were certainly some knuckle-draggers who decried the possibility of one of the characters being trans, and others who seemed bothered by an increased focus on lead character Ellie's status as gay, that wasn't where the majority of the backlash seemed to be coming from. As of this writing, it's been a few days since the release, and from what I've heard so far, much of the leaks were true. The few bits that didn't seem to match up have been speculated by some as coming from a much earlier build of the game but nobody knows for sure at this point. The leaks which proved to be correct were devastating for many, and much of what turned out to be incorrect seemed to upset even more in its reality. I'm not here to talk about the content of the leaks though, or that of the final game for that matter. Again, it wasn't a game I was planning on buying even before all the shit hit the fan. I don't much care for any of that. Instead, allow me to cape for a fan base, not my own. Imagine, if you can, what it'd be like to wait for a game, or a movie, a book, a television show, whatever. I don't give a shit, it doesn't matter. Some piece of art. Even if you don't care about The Last of Us, pick something you do care about. Some creative work that means a lot to you. If you have absolutely none of those, you're probably so boring that talking to you would make me feel like walking off into the sunset, never to return, so uh, <laughs> stay away, stay over there. But anyway, you're waiting, months, years, the hype is real. Expectations are higher than Snoop diggity hot doggity dog. Then you find out, a few months ahead of schedule, that this thing that you've been hyped as fuck for is quite possibly shot through with all manner of elements that leave you unsettled, even if you're sure they can be handled well, in a way that you might appreciate, if not exactly enjoy. Then you see the companies responsible for bringing you this thing that you've been holding out for, the artists behind this work, acting like overzealous misers on the internet, doing everything they can to clamp down not just on the leaks, but on discussion. You know what they say about cutting out a man's tongue. The feeling in the pit of your stomach sours further. Finally, though, the storm breaks, if only for a while, and the piece of art is in your hands, on your mental. In your goddamn PS4, whatever, it's somehow even worse than what those leaks had described. And when you try to vent your frustrations, the professional critics and the industry leaders start hurling insults your way, dismissing your feelings about the thing you love, disregarding all feedback because, hey, what do they care? You're just some garbage internet troll. What value could your opinions possibly hold? I don't give too many fucks about The Last of Us, yeah, but I've felt this kind of shit before. I knew what it was like to see my favorite comic book character, Spider-Man, get taken down a path that... I hated, with writer Dan Slott at the helm for over a decade. Eventually, I called him out. It was a bad scene. He said he was a terrible writer. He gave me a lecture and then blocked me on Twitter. It, uh, it wasn't my best moment, but you know what? Fuck him. It's fine. Fucking thinks he knows anything about Spider-Man. 
I also experienced something like this over the course of the last few Star Wars films, seeing as something I loved and believed in was torn apart by people who just didn't seem to have the same reverence for the material that I did, in the interest of a reconstruction that I sure as fuck never asked for. That's a whole separate ball of wax. If I start talking about Disney Star Wars trilogy, I will never get up from this desk, and sooner or later, my wife is going to kill me. But The Last of Us Part Two urged me to ask a question that's been roiling around in my tumultuous mess of a brain for a long fucking time now. Why didn't they fucking care? I felt terrible for the fans who'd been waiting for years to play this game. I never cared about this franchise, but I could empathize with people like my friends who'd been so fucking demoralized with this thing. I'm able to sit here and say, wow, I can't believe they fucked you guys over like that. That's insane. Do people making these pieces, whatever medium their art may be cast in, do they think about these things? Do they consider them? Really take them on board? I'm a writer myself. I've got two books you can find on Amazon if you truly hate yourself that much. I self-publish all my shit so nobody's heard of me. And I haven't yet been put in a position where I'm all too concerned about upsetting fans or whatnot. I have, however, scrapped some terrible, miserable scenes or ideas that I initially considered for the sake of my art before I came back with, wait, <laughs> hold the fuck up. Why would anyone want to read this? Is this an experience anyone would actually ask for? Sometimes, sure, the answer is yes. There's a poignancy that can be found in misery when it's well-crafted. I'm not denying that. But I think too often those who create art get too fucking wrapped up in their own egos. I think Naughty Dog have overlooked one very crucial thing in their pursuit of some ultimate nihilist misery box in a, a movie with buttons you push to progress through. And that's that without an audience, their studio wouldn't be where it is today. Now, by no means am I suggesting that the game studio or the like is beholden to the whims of its audience. But at the same time, Stephen King once said something to the effect of write first with the door closed, then rewrite with the door open. Meaning that getting your ideas down on the page should be your own personal intimate affair. You're taking your ideas and the crafting them into your art. But then, when you're looking over your creation, you have to contemplate your audience. At least, if you want to be successful. If you've got yourself a game that's just misery porn, ask yourself, who the fuck is going to want to play this thing? Who's going to be grateful they slog through all this shit? Do you know how many people I've seen since this game came out saying, man... I want all those hours of my life back. When the leaks made the rounds, Troy Baker, the voice actor behind series character Joel, a fan favorite, implored everybody to <clears throat> keep an open mind. Well, speaking as someone who absolutely adores Mr. Baker and his titanic body of work, Troy, buddy, my dude, I hope to meet you someday, shake your hand, and thank you for bringing a memorable voice to so many great characters and then ask you what in the utter fuck you thought was going to happen after people played this fucking game. I'm sure you were towing the company line, running damage control for them, sure. It happens. But all the same, did you really think people would love this game? Actual fans, people at home, gamers, not rancid game journos who spend their off time on Twitter or petting their cats while contemplating their next terrible die jobs. Video games are unquestionably an art form. I think we're beyond debating that at this point. And I don't think there's anything wrong with you pursuing fresh ideas in art, trying to push people out of their comfort zones, chasing after your artistic vision, even when it might hurt a bit. But I've got to tell you, Neil Druckmann and company, from what I've seen of The Last of Us Part Two, there's nothing here that seems to have warranted such a gross deluge of spit in the faces of people who have heretofore supported you. Nothing in the story you've presented seemed like it was profound enough to be worth all of this. Art is important. You've got every right to try and realize your vision. But you've also got to recognize that what you're crafting is a product. A product people typically engage in to have some fun, at least on some level. The goal probably should have been to make a game that people would love. Instead, they got themselves a pretty looking vehicle for the massive, big brain, truly novel idea that revenge is bad. Or something. I'm Valiant Shadow, and while I don't care much about The Last of Us, I just wanted to tell all of you, I think I get it.